in video one and so in the second video we're going to extend it a little bit so as you can see uh, we have our consumption schedule that increases as disposable income increases and we can see that as we have more and more disposable income our savings will grow and that in the beginning when we have very little disposable income we actually this save we actually borrow money so there's a way to actually see that it, um, in a different way it's called the savings schedule and it's very simple to draw the savings schedule you know we're gonna have a oh, it's we're gonna have that be our um, dependent variable savings right and that's also in dollars of course and we're gonna have GDP on the x-axis right and obviously also in dollars right trillions of dollars in the case of the US and as you can see from our initial um, drawing our initial model is that for a while saving is negative very very negative here and becomes less and less and less and less negative and until you reach the break-even point and then it becomes positive or more and more positive so the way we're gonna draw it the way we're gonna draw our saving schedule is we're gonna, it's gonna start negative now I'm just estimating uh, the numbers here. I'm not being very precise, but just to get the point across, you know, it's going to start negative and grow to be positive after a while, right? So the break-even point will um, uh, you will you will basically reach the, the x-axis at the break-even point here. Savings is zero. Okay, and that's the savings schedule. Another important uh, characteristic that we have to get from this graph is actually something called the average propensity to consume, APC, average propensity, or likelihood, if you will, propensity, nope, propensity to consume, okay. And the average propensity to consume is basically defined as a ratio between consumption and income. In other words, once you have a certain amount of income, how much of it do you consume? So APC is always a ratio. Okay, it's going to be consumption over disposable income for a particular um, spot on the graph. So, for example, if I'm interested to figure out the average propensity to consume, when my income is six trillion dollars what I will do is I will take the level of consumption and I'll do it in blue over here so this is my level of consumption All right, this should be uh, six million dollars because this is supposed to be a 45 degree line so what we're gonna do is we're gonna assume that the numbers on the y-axis are the same as the number of, on, that are on the x-axis. Okay, so let's just say that this is um, four uh, divided by you know six. Okay, so we're assuming numbers here, and so the average propensity to consume is you know uh, two over three, which is uh, sixty-six percent. Okay. Uh, 0.666 okay now of course there's also something called the APS the average propensity to save and that's simply looking at savings divided by the disposable income for a particular spot on the graph so again if I'm assuming that we're at six trillion dollars worth of income so this is six and I assume that this was $4 trillion of consumption, you can see that my savings is worth $2 trillion. So my APS is going to equal 2 divided by 6. Okay, so what is it? Well, my APS is 33% or 0 0.3333 uh, ongoing. Okay. Um, why is this important? Because it gives us a sense of how much people are saving, how much people are consuming at different levels of disposable income, different levels of GDP, okay, different levels of output.
So one thing that you can notice about the average propensity to consume and the average propensity to save, if you take the sum of the two, it equals one. Okay, so in this case, for example, you know, um, 0.33 plus 0.66 equals approximately one, right? So APC and APS will always equal one. All right, the next thing that's really important for us to understand, the next concept is the concept of the marginal propensity to consume. Now, if you think about what marginal propensity to consume means, we're looking, we're really looking at the marginal or additional propensity likelihood to consume. So the marginal propensity to consume, you can think of it as if you get a dollar, how much of that dollar are you likely to consume and how much are to, to, to use to spend to consume and how much of that dollar are you likely to use for savings? Okay, that's the marginal propensity to save. So marginal propensity propensity to consume. Okay. And MPS is equal to the marginal propensity <coughs> to save. Now, as I said, for the marginal propensity to consume, if I give you an extra dollar, how much of it, <coughs> how much of the extra dollar will you use for consumption? So mathematically, we're looking at the change in consumption in C divided by the change in disposable income. Okay, And if you look at the graph, the change in C is the change of the y-axis, because C is, represents the y-axis. And the change in disposable income <clears throat> is the change of the x-axis, right? The x variable. So really, the marginal propensity to consume is the change in y over change in x. And we know from math that that is just the slope of the line, the slope of the consumption function. Okay? So we can say that the MPC is equal to the slope of the consumption consumption function. So let's do a quick example. For example, if we say that the marginal propensity to consume is equal to 0 0.75, okay, and um, you decide to, uh, you get an additional $100 in disposable income. Well, that leads to you using $75 to consume because of your marginal propensity to consume. Okay? And uh, it will also lead to you and save $25. Therefore, we know that the marginal propensity to consume or save, I'm sorry, marginal propensity to save is going to be 0 0.25. <clears throat> and we can conclude down here that the marginal propensity to consume plus the marginal propensity to save will always equal 1 together. They will always equal 1. Okay? So a few things. Uh, MPC is the slope of the consumption line. MPS is the slope of the savings line. Uh, the marginal propensity to consume is basically the likelihood, um, you know, how much of an extra dollar, an additional dollar, or an additional $100 will you use in consumption, and um, marginal propensity to save, how much will you use it uh, use to save from that $1.